please take us in your journey. Why did you all start running in the first place? I grew up with three brothers. It was survival of the fittest, so to speak. I was always running to them for help or running away from them because I had taunted them somehow. The other reason is because I had aspirations of making it to the Olympics and ski racing and I broke my leg in high school as a sophomore and I started to run as a form of rehabilitation to get back on the slopes the following year. And I found that I really loved running and I just loved challenging myself with uh, longer and longer distances. Don't ever reach the finish line, right? Just, right. just keep there going. There is no finish line. So I started running after I quit my corporate job to become an entrepreneur, and I was struggling with my mental health. And I didn't even consider running until I saw another black man running down on Newberry Street. And I picked it up and I fell in love with it. It helped me get through um, what now I realized was like a mental health episode, having panic attacks, quitting such a stable career to become an entrepreneur is really tough. And so I started running because it helped my mental health brought running to my community so I could help others in my, in my community with their mental health. And then now taking on this um, running apparel industry to create more equity. I started running in high school. It was after we heard, we got the news about, you know, Brianna's murder, Georgia's murder, Ahmad's murder, um, Tony McDay. That week was like a big week for me. And, you know, my wife, shout out to my wife in the crowd. Um, she sent me a link to this organization called Black Man Run. Now I can say that I've become a runner in the sense that I found my purpose in running. Joni's point, there, there really is no finish line. It doesn't matter your time, your body shape, your identity, but anyone can, and that, can access that. Sydney, you talked about the mental frame that running puts you in. Can you expand on that? Yeah, sure. So running to me is really the only time I'm alone with my thoughts and alone with my feelings alone, especially in this world where we're so connected. Running has so many health, mental health benefits that part of the reason why I created Pioneer's Run Crew in Dorchester was because I saw that the community that I grew up in, A, didn't have any running happening, and B, if running helped me in a time of need, what could it do for people who are at or below the poverty line, who are struggling just to get by day to day? What can running bring to their lives? And just the act of creating a space where people feel comfortable enough to come out and run, right, with people who look like them. Especially in the days where I really don't feel like doing it, I find that, oh, the aha, I find that moment, I find that inspiration is like, okay, you know, part of my self-talk is like, one more step, you can do it. Every one of us has like some measure of like imposter syndrome. Oh, I can't do it. Oh, I'm not good enough. Oh, I'm not, I'm not. look at Sid, he, everything's great for him. I mean, Lenny, Joni's out here winning medals. Who am I? Why? I don't, what am I doing, right? And then when you find that space to reflect, it's like, actually, no, you might be that inspiration. You might be that support system for someone else that you don't even know yet. So for me, the mental health and aspects and running, it has, and I think it's literally continued to like kind of save my life and provide me that grounding and balance. I think the world would be a better place if everyone was a runner. <laughs> from a community standpoint. So yeah, I started my own running community and a lot of what we do, we don't only celebrate those who are fast, we also celebrate those who finish last. Community to me is extremely important because I wouldn't be here talking to you if I hadn't been surrounded by a community that shepherded me into the sport and supported me and is still there for me and all the more reason to pay it forward to the next generation. Where do you get your fire from? You know, I believe in passion, perseverance, persistence, and patience. Those are the four Ps that are my guiding principles. And it's always easier being the underdog than it is being the one on top. When you're an underdog, nobody, nobody pays attention to you and none of the pressure is there. When I went to LA in 84, I'd had arthroscopic knee surgery 17 days before the Olympic marathon trials and everybody had written me off. Life Magazine had come to do a big photo essay on me and instead of doing the photo essay on me, they had a little inset of me in a rocking chair in a Lon's nightgown sipping tea. And that added fuel to my fire. And it's not that I'm competing against other people, I'm competing against myself. I want to see how far and how fast I can go. The common thread that runs through everything that I do is why not me and why not us? Seeing the world a different way, how do I bring those experiences back to Dorchester? Right now, in this crowd, in this city, 
44% of black men over the age of 20 suffer from heart disease, some sort of cardiac disease. If there is one other person, one other young black man or black man in the city that can see myself or my brothers in the crowd or brothers that join us every Saturday and they can they can find their own inspiration, they can they can start to believe in themselves or believe in possibility to this point, why not? And if I have an opportunity to be that beacon of light in the dark room for someone else that I don't even know yet, I have to be there. That's my fire. Inclusion wasn't always the forefront of marathon running. Now there's better recognition of the importance of making running accessible for all. As a woman, did you receive any pushback? When you first started running, Joni, in high school, it was thought if a woman ran more than a mile, she would do bodily harm and never be able to bear children. Well, 150,000 miles, two children and a grandchild later, I'm still at it. So we dispelled that myth. And all a person needs, to Jeff and Sid's point, is opportunity. Jeff, I mentioned you're an, an advocate of truth, justice, and equity for all. What does equity mean to you, and how does it apply to running? Equity is being seen as a whole human. I don't have to be, you know, Joni or Sid or Lenny to be to justify my existence. It's having the space to actually figure out who is Jeff Davis? How can I work towards the best version of Jeff Davis today? We all have to feel that we're stakeholders in making this world a better place. And the only way we can do that is if we work together as a community and make it equitable for everybody. The world's not gonna change and be a better place for everybody until we're all in this together.